Well, I love working with different athletes. So I think yeah. it's much more interesting than uh, just because you get to see what other people do and how they train and different mentalities. But to be honest, I think a lot of climbers wouldn't do that, you know? And also when I started doing stuff that wasn't climbing, I was being called a sellout from other climbers for doing stuff that wasn't climbing related. Yeah. Uh, because the climbing community is very like... All right. I don't have a podcast, but I'm doing a podcast today. I have Magnus. We're yeah. in a hotel room. This is really scuff. Isn't this great? I think it's great, yeah. Yeah, well, I do have cool. some audio equipment, so that came out pretty well. But I do want to thank the sponsor of this podcast before we start, and that sponsor is me. I'm sponsoring my own podcast. <laughs> if you guys want to buy some of my products on jujimufu.com, we just released workout pajamas. Here, Magnus. What do you think of that oh. crap? <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very stretchy, it looks like. Yeah, we got right. nine different patterns. Uh, we designed them. We've been working on this product since 2021. Oh, that's awesome. So like it's been a one. long time in the making. There's, there, you're going to be seeing a lot of these coming yeah. out pretty soon. But uh, yeah. Very so cool. thank you, uh, jujimufu.com, for sponsoring <laughs> my own I Don't Have a Podcast. <laughs> Uh, Magnus, when was the last time we saw each other? A few years ago, right? I think it's uh, it was before COVID. Yeah. Uh, right before COVID, so that was March 2020, I think. Okay. Arnold's, Arnold's, yeah, in uh, Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. Oh, well, if you guys, oh yeah, I should probably introduce you. If people don't know who you are, living under a rock or, or on a rock <laughs> wall, a rock. not actually having any connection. If they're on a rock wall, they know then who you are. Yeah. He's a legendary rock climber, guys. Um, and. and and we used to do a lot of collabs. We did do a lot of collabs, yeah. and we're doing one this week. Um, I have his uh, cheat sheet here, which is a book on Magnus. I can read your mind. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got, I got some great stuff out of this book. I'm going to have a chat with you on this podcast today. Good. But uh, I think the, uh, the main thing I got out of reading that was it helped me understand uh, rock climbing culture better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And since i do work with a lot of different people in the fitness industry including you you know mm. you're a rock climber you're the first rock climber I actually worked with outside yeah. of a couple local people right and uh it's just interesting to me to see all the different differences <laughs> all yeah. the different differences of that community and that culture compared to you know where i spend most of my time in which is like strength mm -hmm. and physical culture in terms of like barbell sport mm. bodybuilding uh, physique athletes, things like that. Um, but I did come from a tricking background, which is acrobatic stuff. Which is probably more similar, right? That was, that's what I want to talk yeah. to you about because that was so interesting to me, the parallels between teaching myself how to do the acrobatic stuff I did in the early 2000s mm. and your experience getting into rock climbing. Yeah. And I think that was the coolest part about reading that was it was a nice throwback, mm. a nice little nostalgia for me, but it also kind of made me realize what was missing a lot in today's mm. like what's what's missing a lot in social media was kind of lost in between the lines of things yeah so uh i, I do want to ask you some questions about like having s started with with rock climbing the interesting thing to me was i started with tricking right uh -huh. and there was a fork in the road i took where i started doing um strength exercises to supplement mm. my tricking but i got hooked on them yeah and then i was like okay now i'm lifting weights at the detriment yeah of my own sport whereas you everything that you did was that you were kind of experimenting with outside of rock climbing mm -hmm. if it didn't serve rock climbing you dropped it yeah so i read that the first time magnus bench pressed 175 mm. pounds at 120 pounds body weight yeah, uh, it's something like that. 80 yeah. kilos, yeah. Yeah, that'd be like a 220 guy, 220 pound guy bench pressing 375 for the first time he walks into a gym or something. Yeah. It's just, it's insane. But you built that raw strength through rock climbing yeah. and stuff like that. And I was also just naturally pretty strong when I was younger. Yeah. I could always, like, I could do 10 pull ups before even climbing, before doing anything. Yeah. And uh, I wasn't like a super skinny kid either. I was like, uh, not chubby, but like, a little bit bigger. So you, <laughs> I haven't been around enough rock climbers. Are you, are you much bigger than most other rock climbers your height? Uh, most other like professional rock climbers, yes. Okay. Um, they're usually a lot skinnier. So um, and most of the rock climbers are around my height, from like five, uh, four to six feet around yeah. that height. Um, 
but most of the strongest guys are around five uh, seven five eight my height yeah and uh, they weigh like 10 kilos less than me uh, yeah at that least was, that was interesting to read about mm -hmm. your your experience with dropping weight dieting yeah. that was holy shit yeah that, I that know. part of that <laughs> reading about that was like i had no idea yeah like what you went through man yeah like, no it's I, know, I mean it's something that i don't want to talk about on youtube really because i don't want to promote it i don't want to because uh, there are a lot of kids watching my channel and stuff so yeah but i feel like the book was a good opportunity to talk about that stuff yeah mm -hmm. um, it was uh the the difference between um like my experience with hunger and mm -hmm. dieting is hunger and dieting for me like unless it was for body building competition you saw a lot of other things drop off yeah your weight training what you get weaker in the gym mm -hmm. for the most part um you might be flatter looking in the mirror in the process of get of getting leaner right you have less energy whereas for you you looked at when you were hungry that was yeah. a positive thing because did it always up to a certain point, it looked like it directly correlated to better workouts. Yeah, in the beginning it did. Um, so just so that uh, people watching have an idea of what we're talking about, I lost around 10 kilos. Uh, so I went from, I don't remember exactly, it was something like 66 kilos to 56, which at my, still my same height, you know. And That's that was that was basically because all the other professional climbers, mm -hmm. I felt like, um, at that point, I was like probably around top ten in the world. But I thought that if I if I um, wanted to get become the best climber in the world, I had to look more like the best climbers in the world, and they look skinnier than myself. Yeah. Um, so I thought, okay, the only way is to start losing weight. And then in the beginning, it felt great, but then eventually, like I felt weaker and weaker, and I didn't realize what the reason was. Well, I think deep down, I probably knew what the reason was, but I didn't want to. Um, um, yeah, I didn't want to tell myself that because at that point it felt so good losing weight. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's, it was definitely some sort of eating disorder. Yeah. It was, it was interesting to read how you didn't want muscle intentionally. Like yeah. you were getting angry that you were <laughs> like, I need to lose this muscle. And so mm -hmm. you do things like stop eating meat. Yeah. Which is like, well, meat is going to put muscle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, it, I just find that funny because that is like a, a lot of people just, cannot wrap their head around i know you i know. don't want it, muscle you're trying it to lose sounds muscle. like i'm lying but no for, for me i had big muscles no one no the other climbers didn't have big muscles yeah they were really skinny and especially their legs they had really skinny legs so i just wanted i mean they were my idols you know i wanted yeah. to look more like them uh so i was always super ripped uh or when i was a professional climber i was always super ripped but i felt like i had too much muscle yeah um so um yeah, I mean, if someone said to me, like, oh, you look really muscular before a competition, I would, like, oh, shit, I'm going to do so bad. Like, I, th that would really hurt me if someone said that. <laughs> oh, my God. But if someone said, like, you look skinny, you look uh, light, that would be amazing. I would f I would feel oh, so good. This is such the so opposite. So it's, it's of, the opposite of you. I know, it I've is been, so the opposite. This is the best way to fuck with a bodybuilder's head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. But uh, but I'm not like that anymore, though. I should uh, say I'll, that. I'm going to yeah. ask you about that. Yeah, because you rebounded. Yeah, you, I, 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 you re you reach the point where like this is too far. I'm getting weaker. Yeah, and it did. It does take a little while to correct metabolic changes like mm -hmm. that. It. it I'm, I'm going to guess it took about a year for things to exactly kinda yeah. come back. That's kind of what happens when you starve yourself like that for that reason for that long. But like when you suppress your body from trying to grow while you're trying to get as strong as possible dude you just what you blew up within mm -hmm. the next year didn't you you added yeah you added that weight and then some and no strength I, f I felt like i added a lot of weight without adding strength so i felt like super weak okay yeah so but it took about a year before i felt like a little bit like myself again all right but uh and then i mean it got better but still throughout my whole uh, professional climbing career i I, I was always kind of strict with what I could eat and uh -huh. couldn't eat. And I would base a lot, like I would drink a lot of coffee and I would also do snooze. I mean, you know mm -hmm. what snooze is. Yeah. It's tobacco that you put on your lip. and uh, So that would basically be my diet for a while. Um, yeah. And I would do intermittent fasting without even knowing what it was because I felt like the best way to not eat much was to wait uh, with the first meal yeah. until pretty late. Um, 
so yeah, I had a I had a weird relationship uh, to food for uh, yeah for a lot of years, but it got better though. Yeah, like I could I knew that okay below a certain weight I will not function I will not be strong so I need yeah. to I found kind of my my uh, match weight. I'm gonna just just the process of you discovering your match weight. Yeah, I'm gonna guess that your match weight ended up being higher than your peers at the heights, which is yeah. kind of confusing for someone that's young and still learning this and kind of coming up into it. Cause you're uh -huh. like, I need to be like them yeah. because they're the best, but the, but your body's different. Exactly. And that's what I should have realized. And that's my, probably my biggest regret that I didn't realize that, you know, yeah. uh, I think that I should probably have climbed at a higher weight, not uh, focusing so much on food, but mm -hmm. instead focusing on just getting stronger, eating healthy and also getting more sleep uh recovering better so yeah. there are a lot of things so i definitely do not promote that at all like uh if there's something i could tell my younger self it's to uh to not focus so much on diet like have a healthy diet of course but um but just focus on training because i think i i didn't get the best recovery i could have trained way harder if i just ate right right yeah and then that would have actually gave yeah it's, you're it makes sense to me it's uh I was I was going to say though like and that's the lesson to take away from it for people who are listening. Yeah, exactly. Uh don't do what I did. I mean, <laughs> I like like I wrote in the book like I had to experiment with my own body because also at that time I did, there was no knowledge, there were no books I could read, there was nothing. So I just had to trust myself and especially coming from Norway, really small country, there were no good climbers. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people tried to give me advice, but it was bad advice and I realized that. Huh. So I tried to uh, I tried to look at the best climbers in the world, but I didn't really know them well enough. And also everything was kind of secretive, you know, no one was talking about what they were eating and stuff. And still like, so you kind of just had to guess how people did it. Yeah, it creates a more artistic approach in the end, in my opinion, yeah. because I'm going to guess that if you had to write down your diet on paper, that's probably not your diet on paper. Exactly. Like, you're going to yeah. look at it and be like, there's algorithms and patterns that base what I'm making my behaviors and my choices on, on so many things that you can't just stick it on paper like these are the six meals I eat. Mm -hmm. It's not so simple for no. what you do and what your schedule is like now, especially yeah. that you're so busy and flying all over the place and doing so many different things. Yeah. You know? Especially no. as a competitive athlete, like mm -hmm. um, like when you have to go to China and you can't eat their food because you might get food poisoning yeah. or something because you're going to be competing in a, in a national championship there. It's like, well, how do you put that on paper? You know what I mean? So it's just like you have to learn all these things through experience. But I think what – the one of the biggest feelings I got from reading your experience uh, and looking into it more was like you're just it wasn't so much a, it to me it's it like it wasn't so much about the outcome like I have to get this it's like you're just into it like yeah. you just really like rock climbing oh yeah I mean I, I was willing to die for rock climbing you yeah. know that was the only thing I cared about yeah I mean you you like the language you like the culture yeah. you like the people you like the magazines you yeah, like yeah, the, everything like everything about it was just like you're just into it yeah like, you were just addicted to it and it's just like it's really cool to read that because it's like I think so many people just want to like how do I get how do I get big like you <laughs> how, how do I, how do I rock climb better like you and it's yeah. like you would when you were get when you were growing up as a rock climber, mm -hmm. I don't think you'd ever like ask those questions from the same place a lot of people ask those type of questions from. You were like you're more trying to mine for information, yeah, rather than just like you know how do you do it? You know I just want what you have because you don't want what they have. You just want to be better. Mm. You know what I mean? And so you're trying to find all the little secrets and it must've been fun, you know, before social media was fun. Oh yeah, I love you know, it. Before the internet, <laughs> it's like, I can remember when information was more scarce and mm -hmm. you had to like, I mean, even like 20 or 30 years ago, you got guys reminiscing about having to go to a library yep. and get medical medical text to understand how exercise worked to a certain extent. I mean, yeah. it's just, there's something fun about digging through things and really getting into it like that. And I think that's lost in a lot of, um, yeah. A lot, a lot of what people do today. You yeah. Know what I mean, yeah, but I also think to become good at something, you just really have to love it. Uh, because it's, uh, I think what you think about at night, that's what you're gonna uh, progress in and excel in. Yeah, was, and, and uh, when I grew up, like the only thing I thought about was climbing. I, I would dream about climbing, I would 
daydream about climbing. That's the only thing I was thinking about. Yeah, yeah. And uh, now I don't do that anymore. I think that's the reason why I don't progress. You know, uh, I was I would always be thinking about how can I uh, climb more? How could I uh, climb harder? Like, uh, what should I train? Like, mm -hmm. that's the only thing that I would think about. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I think that uh, it's impossible to become good at something you don't love. Like, you have to find something you love. Uh, right. To the, become good the, at it. The the phrasing I use for people is like. If I didn't get paid for this, I'd be doing it anyway. Yeah. Because I did it without getting paid for it for 16 years before I made a dollar yeah. <laughs> doing this. And if I stopped getting paid for it right now, I would still be doing it. Yeah. I just wouldn't have the the monetary resources to back it up right. and help it. So I probably wouldn't be able to do as much of it, but I would still be doing it. Yeah. And we should also say that I'm not here to promote my book because my book is not for sale. Uh, so that's not why I'm talking to Juji about the book. Uh, no, we're, we're having a podcast yeah. because it's not a podcast. We're, yeah. just, we're just here <laughs> chatting. We hope you enjoy this. But I mean, I haven't seen you in so long. And I'm just I just think it'd be great just to have this conversation. Oh, yeah, definitely. About all this stuff, because I feel like my audience, I mean, you have a rock climbing audience. For mm -hmm. the most part, you have a large portion of your audience is rock climbers, not just rock climbers, but a larger portion is a smaller portion of my audience is a very small portion yeah. is compared to all everything else. And I just love looking at the parallels between the rock climbing culture and what the dominant culture of my viewership is mm. and the world I live in for the most yeah. part, because it's like, you're talking about daydreaming about rock mm. climbing and thinking about it, what you think about at night. That's a good sign. That means you really like it. And that's yeah. something to pursue. And I was um, like, for example, you would you would visualize routes, mm -hmm. 120 movement routes with your hands and feet, and you would obsess over these routes for days, and you'd be thinking about every choice you made, 72 hours out to 100 and how many ever is four days? I don't know what the multiple <laughs> is. Was all related to like you passing that route mm -hmm. you know or, or or hitting a, a pr on a time on it or something so every meal everything like you're so obsessed with it you cared so much about the actual workout i just i think that's very alien to a lot of people who just like today's leg day mm -hmm. time to do legs <laughs> oh boy you know like let's go kill it and take some pre-workouts like they didn't think about like the machine and like what the pad setting would be and how much weight, how that would feel, what they'd be doing in their rest set, what the, mm. where they would go from that exercise and that, what it'd be like to be in a gym with other people doing it. They don't visualize those things. They're just like, oh, it's just like they just show up and just like check off the box, you know, whereas there's so much premeditation involved in mm. rock climbing. I loved reading about that. I was like, man, I think we can get something <laughs> out of taking that behavior and applying it to other sports, man. Yeah. As long as it's not too much, you know. Sometimes I think I could get a little bit too obsessive. Okay. And try to analyze my body too much. And like, you know, you feel pain yeah. easily because you're like looking for pain kind uh -huh. of. And you're also studying your skin. How's my skin? Is it a little bit too thin? Oh, I have a cut here. That's not going to work. Maybe I shouldn't try the Let project see your hands. today. Today, they're, I mean, I yeah. don't know. Last I don't few really times I saw them, they're dry as fuck, dude. Yeah, no, they're, <laughs> they're good now. It's like you, you need a, skin, a lotion sponsor is what you need. <laughs> yeah, but probably not as a rock climber. Lotion is the last thing you want. You want the driest hands you, you on the planet. You want dry hands, yeah. Yeah, your hands are like, last few times I saw them, they look like they were made out of sandpaper and stone. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's so much <laughs> muscle and density and just lack of moisture on them yeah you know what i mean yeah. but yeah the session sounds like it was the goal at that point the so session yeah you're you achieving that route yeah i mean that's how it would work like half of the year i would have competitions and then half of the year i would work on projects outside mm -hmm. so i would uh, go to uh, mostly spain and mm -hmm. i would find a hard route that f like had a hard, uh, high grade mm -hmm. high difficulty grade and then I would work on that route until I succeeded. Uh, and that could take months. And these weren't necessarily observed or filmed either? No, not at all. Not filmed. That was before social media. Is it yeah. so much easier to do a workout or, well, I'm calling it a workout for you. It's a climb without having to film it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's very it's, different. I, I find that people get a lot of uh, backlash online for, like, having their monopods in a gym and filming stuff. It's like, where does this content go? This person's filming their leg extensions. Who cares? But at the same time, I'm like, it's actually harder to film a workout than it is just to do it. It's like, it's such a luxury. So all these guys are, like, making fun of, like, the new kids in the gym filming the workouts and stuff. It's like, 
that's hard. Yeah. That's so distracting. But you have to manage that distraction if it's my you know my business, for example, yeah. to balance a workout. I feel like I'm cheating or like like I'm cheating on my diet, like I'm eating a dessert I'm not supposed to, <laughs> but I don't film a workout. I'm like, oh God, this is so nice. Yeah. Just to do a workout. You know what I mean? So that was before social media. Yeah. You know, before you had your climbing um, channel and your YouTube channel mm -hmm. and all the other stuff. I mean, going back if you did that now, you'd be like, wow, this is so much easier just to climb. Yeah. No, it was, uh, my life was so different back then. Yeah. I was just climbing and relaxing, doing nothing else. Yeah. Um, yeah. At one point I started playing PlayStation too, but I had to throw it out of my house because I couldn't handle it. It was too okay. much. To, to, well, what was, I mean, <laughs> that PlayStation 2 is a staple amongst strongmen and bodybuilders. Yeah, yeah for, for ath athletes too. Like yeah. they, because you need, I mean, you can only train so much and mm -hmm. then you need to relax and zone out. And a good way to zone out is to play video games. Yeah, computer but games. you threw yours out. Yeah, because it got too much. Like I'm, uh, I have like an obsessive personality. So when I go for something, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I can't control myself. Like so. Zero or a one, right? It's, yeah, exactly. So uh, it's like <sighs> it's fun. the same with like chocolate and stuff in my. I can't have it in my. I I just rather not have it. It's just so much easier. I know exactly because then I constantly it's like nagging me and I'm thinking about it. Yeah. So I just throw it out. It's so much easier. Yeah. And I feel so good afterwards. So I'm like, oh. Yeah. That's out of the house. <laughs> it's sometimes it's an all or nothing mindset with certain things like that. For example, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, and also um, now uh, in climbing, uh, sometimes you have to film stuff to to have proof of doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of just the honor system of logging it online. Yeah, yeah. Blog, instead yeah. of the yeah, because that's what we used to do. We just log it online, and people still do that. But back then. I mean, still now also, it's just based on trust. Mm -hmm. If you say that you did something, people believe you. But um, of course there were witnesses and stuff. You had a belayer and people were watching mm -hmm. you. But um, Aside from sharing it with other people as the purpose of a log or a blog or a or proof of, hey, I actually did this. It, it was interesting to read like um, how you log your workouts for rock climbing because for tricking i could never log it it's just like i don't count reps of 540 kicks or backflips or this i just write down like hey this kick worked better when i pointed the toes a little mm. bit more inside i was noticing qualitative differences in what i did um and just kind of like what led up to it like i took two days off from weight training obviously i have a better session you know i was out here you know i did this type of warm-up blah 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 but it wasn't like Sets reps, sets reps, sets reps, exercises. It's more like, almost like a journal. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I guess that's how you got started was you started logging your routes. Yeah, but we just logged the routes. Just uh, the routes that I did. Yeah. So if I sent something, if I tried it, like I could have a session and not log anything. Yeah. It's just when you complete the, when you do it from bottom to top, that's when I would log it to remember the dates and everything. Okay. And also to, um, like the eight day dot nu website that uh, we logged it at that was um, um the website's name uh we um they would also do like a little news report if it was a high grade okay so part of being a professional climber was also to climb the hardest grade not only doing well in competitions yeah which was uh, probably an even more important part of being a professional climber was like to to climb those hard grades okay so routes that maybe had been climbed by between yeah like two people before or five people right so um, yeah so from an outsider looking in trying to like relate to how this relates to like something like weight training mm. um if you're training for a deadlift and you're trying to get like 700 pounds and you're like man i'm, I'm just like stuck here so then you start thinking about the movements that are contributing to your weaknesses like my lower back is the i think the sticking point here so i need to find some accessory exercises to supplement to bring up that weak point is that how you train for routes and rock climbing because it's like it's like that route has more jug holds mm -hmm. than any other and that's a weakness of mine so i need to train that is that like the thought process you can't through? i mean you can't set a replica in the gym but usually what you do outside is just first you try the route so you use the equipment like yeah. you use the bolts and stuff and you just try one move at the time so you try one move and then you rest one move and rest and then you try to link bigger sections 
rest bigger bigger sections and then rest and then eventually when you feel like you're strong enough you try it from the bottom to the top without falling or resting that's okay. the goal okay so but you break it into small parts and practice those small parts i got you so yeah it's just like a a trick then or a, an yeah. acrobatic skill is like all right first you have your kick then you have your dip and then you you train the kick and the dip the kick the dip then you mm -hmm. try to put them together oh get a little bit closer but i definitely need to work more on the pieces more yeah just go back to work on the pieces yeah exactly yeah okay. so and then you link it together and then once you've done it from the bottom to the top then you log it and then you're done with it then you can move on to the next <laughs> you can erase it from your memory and you can move on to the next route yeah <laughs> Are, so, uh, but that, it's pretty cool. I mean, that whole lifestyle is something that I miss. You know, you go to a place, like somewhere in Spain, a yeah. little small village, you live there for two months and you try this one route and you just obsess over that one route. And then eventually you do it. And then maybe you move to France and you go to some small place in France and you stay there for a month and you try this project. Um, and yeah, no, I, I definitely miss that lifestyle a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're doing you're doing something similar now, except for now instead of traveling for rock climbing, you're traveling for your YouTube channel and creating yeah. meeting. Well, you're you're with me right now in a hotel room, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to not doing a podcast. Um, yeah. But then uh, later in this trip, we're going to be working with strongmen, and you've, mm -hmm. you've had some other people they've worked with. So you're kind of commingling, and you're working with the different cultures and trying to have a mixture of it. It's been really cool to see, like, you know you're trying these things that are outside of your wheelhouse and how have you, how have you felt about that? Have you, cause I'm, I'm sorry. I'm picking your brain so much about rock climbing stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just, I love physical culture and I yeah. love how distinct rock climbing is compared to a lot of the other ones that I've been exposed to. Yeah. So you're coming from the rock climbing background and now you're going and going and looking like how, how does, how do you as one of the best rock climbers, you know, view people that are lifting weights mm -hmm. or that are, you know, into bodybuilding and that type of stuff. Like what has been some of the things that you've noticed? It's like, oh, you know what? That really stuck in my mind when I watched how the guys that did the the heavy lifts did that or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like different types of athletes you've worked with. Well, I love working with different athletes. I think yeah. it's much more interesting than uh, just because you get to see what other people do and how they train and different mentalities. But to be honest, I think a lot of climbers wouldn't do that. You know, and also when I started doing stuff that wasn't climbing, I was being called a sellout from other climbers for doing stuff that wasn't climbing related. Yeah. Uh, because the climbing community is very like. Wow. It's protective. Protective. Of it. It's protective of itself. Yeah. Yeah. It's sacred. Right. So um, that was a little bit difficult in the beginning. Um, but um, but no, I, I loved it. And uh, I always, uh, I I've always liked also other types of training. I mm -hmm. just haven't been able to do it because I was always afraid of being too muscular. Yeah. Uh, so, but since I retired in 2017, that's not been a problem. You know, I don't really care anymore. Uh, if I climb a little bit on a lower grade, I don't I don't really care. You know, uh, for me, it's. I think also for what I'm doing today, it's better to be a little bit more like all rounded, all over fit. Yeah. I don't have to climb v15 you know it's enough to climb v11 and then uh also being strong at other things and being good at running and yeah uh, like yeah different stuff and i enjoy it to be honest i really enjoy it uh especially since i i will never become better than i once was in mm -hmm. climbing uh, and for me being all or nothing type of guy that's kind of demotivating yeah, a lot of professional climbers they will climb at a very high level, and they will continue to climb their whole lives, but at a lower level every year, kind yeah. of. Yeah, um, I see a benefit of both approaches, uh, but, though. But you see also different, like you also mm -hmm. see someone who progress every year, but that's people who haven't been at like the like a highest world class level. Yeah, because you can't go up from there when you reach your forties and fifties. You know that's impossible. Right. So um, I do, I, yeah, I, um, for me, that's not very motivating to keep climbing, but at a lower grade. I mean, uh, that is what I'm doing now, but it doesn't take so much effort. You know, I, I'm yeah. still climbing, but I also do other stuff. Right. That's the way I feel because, you know, I get flack a lot. It was like, can you still do backflip? Can you still do your moves? I'm yeah. like, I'm 260 pounds and almost 40 years old. Yeah. Find me another person that's almost 40 that can do those moves, <laughs> yeah. first of all. And then... 
if you can't find that, find me a young person that's in their prime that's 260 pounds that can do these things. <laughs> so it's like, it gets hard. <laughs> but it can be, yeah, if I if I said, you know, I'm just going to devote everything back to, to the acrobatic side of things and that's all I'm doing, I would mm-hmm. never, ever be anywhere close to as good as I was when I was 26. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's no way. So it's like, why would I go back? I've already been there. Yeah. I don't need to go back there. You know, instead, what I do now is like, what are the what are the few moves that I can do now that add to everything else if I maintain them yeah. or that just bring me joy? And those are simple moves like a backflip, an aerial, mm-hmm. the splits, yeah. you know, a, a few kicks. But I mean, my repertoire is is a fraction of what it used to be. But I I identified the ones that mean the most to me and then that add enough value to everything else that I want to do now. Right. You see what I'm saying? But I can all, but I also see other guys that are you know around my age who've been tricking for as long as me mm. and they get worse and worse and worse but not like bad and it's still it's inspiring in a different way because it's like they're still doing it and they're mm. still that good they're not as good as they were but that's pretty damn close sometimes and mm. to them it's close enough to where hey i'm still doing this so i can right. see how it can work both ways yeah but how does the tricking community, how, how do they view you? <laughs> Sam is asking me this question. Um, I honestly don't know because I don't look for it. I don't go and see what they're saying about me. But if I were to make an assumption, mm. um, the people that would defend me would be like, he was there in the beginning. He created the largest tricking community. Mm. And he's the and he was the best at his size. Like, There's no trickster that's more muscular than me that's mm. ever as good as me. The people that would the negative stuff that people would see me as would be like why is why is he considered like so important in the tricking community because his moves are so basic okay he is nowhere near the skill level of anyone during his time even so it's like why does everyone care about him so much mm. so i can see it from both perspectives the young kids perspective that wasn't exposed to my community and, and the culture of tricking back in the early 2000s they're like why do they care about this guy it wasn't that good mm. you see what i'm saying but then the people that were there are like well he was different in these regards and yeah. but at the end of the day I love the tricking community and I love the culture because it has a lot of parallels to rock climbing, which mm. is why I'm kind of geeking out on this conversation, yeah. man, because I didn't realize like how similar a lot of these things are and how much is just lost and it's not there in the space that I'm occupying most of my time in, which mm-hmm. is just like weight training and bodybuilding and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, I was going to ask like you... Um, you like being well-rounded now. Yeah. Uh, you didn't cast your legs in, in, <laughs> in stone and try to shrink your legs. Is that, what the hell is that about? I don't know. I read I've, that. I've heard people, or I've heard one person, I don't know, it might be a rumor. But yeah, he did that. He sat in a wheelchair for a few weeks to lose uh, weight in his legs. Yeah. Uh, lo- did it work? Lose muscle weight. Yeah, <laughs> it does work. Yeah, if you put a cast on anything, it will you it will I, drop weight really quickly. I but it will also gain it back really quickly, though. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Mm. <laughs> kind of. Well, it's kind of good, but it's kind of bad for them. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think Olympic gymnast ring specialist mm-hmm. do something similar because if you look at a ring specialist in gymnastics, mm-hmm. they look almost like they're paraplegic. Yeah. And the, it's almost like they're in a wheelchair and they have to be helped up out of the damn thing. And then when they get on the rings, that's where all that upper body strength is. Like, now yeah. I see why he does that. <laughs> yeah. His legs don't weigh anything. And yeah. he wears the pants and he has the toe point and everything looks like you would expect. But that guy is not front squatting even half of his body weight. No. <laughs> you <Yeah. know? laughs> so, yeah, you you never, I guess you had to figure out along the way along your journey like where where's you found like that's too far for dieting i can't do that that's unsustainable i'm not going to sit in a wheelchair to make my leg shrink for this it's just like you just have to kind of like decide where your boundaries are you know what i mean are there any more that you found like that's too far i can't do that uh no i guess that's that's it those are two main ones yeah two main ones yeah yeah People would avoid cycling, okay. like biking, yeah. uh, places. I don't. I never really cared about that. Yeah, I wasn't too extreme when it came to stuff like that. How is your stamina right now? 
Uh, it's pretty good. It's naturally been pretty good. I'm like okay at running and stuff, yeah. long distances. See, it's interesting we're having a conversation about well-roundedness because I've prioritized my cardio in the last uh, few years, yeah. especially in, since last September. And the reason was because I started getting so many good benefits from it. Mm. I was like, in terms of functional training, when people think of functional training, Magnus, I think they think of like, like literally gross movement skills, not so much like... I'm in an airport. I've been rushing around like a madman, and I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, where is that coming from? It's coming from my cardio training I do every morning. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's really cool to discover that. Um, has there been anything else that you've you've worked with yourself? It's like, you know, I really like that the benefit of that type of training that wasn't there when I was all in on rock climbing. Like when I was a hundred percent on rock climbing, that type of feeling I got, like the feeling of being able to walk for a long time or mm. get up without having pain here it's like there's anything like not really but i think uh now uh i'm able to because back then i would always rest for something there will always be a competition or something yeah. that i was training for now i can train whatever i want and how ever hard like as hard as i want to uh, that's been a big difference and also i have more quality in my sessions now because i will rest more than i did okay so looking back at it i also think that i trained too much okay because i was always a little bit overtrained, so i would have a lot of those like 80 percent sessions mm -hmm. and i think having those 100 percent sessions are really important for climbing especially uh it's like when you're your mental yeah when you're completely rested and you can give it 100 percent. yeah but i was i would always be a little bit tired so I would never get to climb with like 100%. Yeah. Um, that way when you peaked for competition, that's when you got That's when I got my 100%. I got you. That's, yeah. the, that's the way of most, and what I've noticed, most professional athletes have to do that. Yeah. I think it's a necessity. Yeah, yeah, probably. So, but other than that, no, no, just not. I don't, I don't really train anything else than climbing. I mean, I do a lot of, like uh, muscle ups and yeah. weighted pull ups and stuff, but I don't. There's nothing else that I train. Okay. Uh, Especially back then. Yeah, back then nothing. If but it even did, if now, it didn't serve rock climbing. It was out. But at the same time, right now I do a lot of the YouTube videos. Can actually be good training if you do enough of them, <laughs> like all the all the military tests and stuff. Yeah. Because I really exhaust myself, you know, when you have cameras and you, you, there's a pressure to um, mm -hmm. perform, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, I that, I, well, the last video I did was a sled push recently, yeah. where it's like I'm out there for two and a half hours in a parking lot with a crazy old powerlifter telling me to push shit back and forth for hours. I'm like, I had a great workout because I couldn't look like a puss on camera. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So yeah, you're right. YouTube yeah. can and uh, filming in general can make workouts can enhance workouts sometimes because the pressure. Yeah. Um, for for all the different things that you're doing now, like what has been your like your favorite type of training? It's like wow, I you know I didn't know I'd like that that much. Has there been something that's like it stands out aside from rock climbing? Uh, I mean, I, I enjoy a lot of the things that I do. I like uh, all types of martial arts. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah like, but I don't really have time to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, BJJ, I would love to uh, start doing more of. Um, uh, like it, uh, Muay Thai. Yeah. All that stuff. I, I find it really interesting. Yeah. There's just something about it that intrigues me. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did boxing for the first time recently, and I kept wanting to pick up my legs yeah. and kick. Yeah, I saw my, that video. Because of my yeah. martial arts background, I kept wanting to pick. I was like, God, I cannot break yeah. these old habits. I, I would like to revisit martial arts as I get older, but my interest in martial arts isn't so much the the sparring. the combat side. Yeah, it's not the sparring or the or the combat side. I, I'm the weirdo that likes katas. Okay, you know, yeah. that's the stuff where they go down the floor and they do the forms and stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. Just, that, kind of what got me into tricking right. was that's what I really wanted to do when I saw that for the first time. I was like, that's what I really like. I like the crazy looking stuff, you know? Yeah. But yeah, it's just, uh, it, it's so cool to watch you like try all these different things and you're so good at so many of them too, you know? Yeah. I mean, uh, when you're a professional athlete in one way, you, you know, you know how to train for things. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, and you know how to approach something too. You, you got a certain mindset that can yeah. have carry over from that rock climbing as a, as an athlete just put himself in the hole like okay yeah. i can do this i yeah. gotta push through the pain yeah i guess the only thing that people don't see is how involved i am with the filming as well you know yeah so when p someone is explaining something to me at the same time i'm looking at the camera and thinking you should be more over there 
and your that lens should be different. It should be a twenty five millimeter, not a thirty five <laughs> this angle. <laughs> you cannot see it now. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking about my microphone. Is that right? And then I look at my guest. His microphone is looking like it's about to fall off. <laughs> like there's so many things going on at once, and that's yep. the thing that people don't see. Oh, I know. Uh, yeah, that's, that's so uh, a lot of things that I try, I wish I could try also without filming first, at least to yeah. actually learn it, because it feels like when you're filming stuff, you're so obsessed with getting the good best footage possible yeah yeah i mean it's just a lot you got to think about and when you're the one actually doing the training mm -hmm. at the same time but then you're also having to keep track of like are the mics on were they charged they have the right lens yeah. you know is this like oh the gym is really loud today i yeah. gotta go talk to the gym owner and tell him to turn it off that you too know? yeah um is the camera gonna overheat yeah <laughs> the yeah well the camera overheats you have to pull the uh viewfinder the viewfinder uh, away from the yeah from the actual camera body and pop open the battery compartment and these are little things that you find out from experience yeah um i mean we filmed the vi we we learned that one when we filmed the posing video outside with john meadows rest in peace mm. and we had to film the whole thing over again because it was a one take the camera oh. overheated and then his cameraman was the one that came over to us and said, uh, pull the thing away from the camera and pop open the battery compartment. I was like, that's it? Just do that? He's like, yeah. Sure enough, yeah. we were able to film the whole thing again, right back to back, <laughs> out there in the same heat. Yeah. And it's just like... Very, very, yeah, he was yeah. very nice that that video was actually done twice in a row and that was the second take. But it's like, these are things that I had to do the whole thing over again, too. So yeah. I already had gone through all my poses and yeah, stuff yeah, on camera. Yeah. Now I had to do it all over again. It's, you know? not, that, it's not that easy to do it a second time. No, it it's usually, not. Usually, um, yeah, it will feel uh, less natural the second time. It's not that you didn't hit record. It's that the camera just stopped recording yeah. because <laughs> it got overheated. You didn't see that coming. Yeah, there's all sorts of things that you're going to run into when you're... Yeah. Uh, you know, a YouTube creator like you are, especially, you know, with the travel and stuff, especially international travel, it's even harder. Yeah. You know, because you do more international travel than I do. Yeah. Um, so you're pretty comfortable is, with uh, it. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind traveling. I actually yeah. like traveling. You know, it's, uh, yeah, I've been traveling my whole life. So, yeah. Uh, no, I, I enjoy that. But, uh, so I know this conversation has been a lot about training, rock climbing. You know, I just had a lot of questions for you. Like, now you're creating content for YouTube. You have, mm. uh, you have stake in multiple gyms and uh, your business, Rugna, and mm. there's just a lot going on. It's like, yeah, surely you're overwhelmed, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> I'm, uh, everyone, like always when I get emails and stuff, they yeah. expect to talk to my team. They're okay. Like, yeah, yeah, but, uh, they're, and they're always so surprised when they talk to me directly because yeah. I don't have any team. Yeah um i've answered emails before and people don't believe it's me yeah it's just like because <laughs> I'm, I'm answering their question about their order right like, where's my order and it happens to get to me somehow usually my dad manages those but every now and again something will go to my inbox instead i'm just like i'll just take care of it so i'm like yeah. your tracking number is this we'll reship you this i go ahead and put the order in he says okay well we'll tell juji blah 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 i signed the other email off as juji it's like I am Juji. Yeah. I'm sitting here before I work out that you're going to watch on, <laughs> on your Instagram here in a second, emailing you. That's what I'm doing before you see the video that everyone else sees. Yeah. So I'm emailing you back. So yeah, we're, we're there. We, we do things, you know, it's, it's not yeah. just like we have these huge teams behind us. But, I, but I mean, I know a lot of people like our size who have big teams, like they've had, mm -hmm. they have 10 people working for them and you'll never be able to talk directly to that person. So it's just, uh, yeah. Uh, but for me, I I don't know. I think having a team is also more of a responsibility, you know? Mm -hmm. I could, tomorrow I can decide that, okay, I'm not going to upload for a year. I'm going to take a year off. I don't have any commitments to yeah. anyone. I mean, of course, I have Rungna, my clothing brand and, and stuff, but I don't have anyone working, working directly with me at this point. Right. But I am at the same time starting to uh, realize that I need to get someone to do some of the work so i have one editor now who's going to try uh wor working for me for a while it's amazing that uh, yeah yeah and uh but i think yeah it has not worked so well in the past with other editors but i think if we work more closely in the beginning mm -hmm. i can give feedback look at his project and yeah then i think it'll it might work out yeah yeah i think to a certain extent like well say it for what it is youtube's a business yeah you know what I mean? And to a certain extent, like, there is no um, right and... There, there's good and bad, like, 
practices in business, but there's no like one way of doing it. Like mm -hmm. some people have more of a, a philosophy of business where it's like there's less overhead, there's less, um, there's more time for this. There's these, you know, there's it's just different. Is a different approach. It's, yeah. it's like there's and some business people are like, no, you have to outsource everything and blah blah blah. I think it just honestly, it kind of depends on a person's personality to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. And I could see flaws on both sides because if, if you never outsource anything, if you never get a team behind you, if you never go, I'm going to give up creative control of this because I understand. Like even though this is the last thing I want to give up is the creative mm -hmm. outsourcing in order to get to the next level, I have to do that. But then sometimes it's like, no, but that's actually my favorite part of it. So why would I get rid of the one part that I would do for hours, even if it was like yeah. spinning my wheels, because I just like to do it, you see yeah. what I'm saying? So I think there's a fine line between outsource everything and actually have some skills. Because yeah. I think the whole adage these days in the last 15, 20 years, I've noticed more and more people uh, spousing outsource things outsource things like then mm -hmm. what you're not gonna have any fucking skills yeah <laughs> it's like i can do adobe photoshop and premiere and page maker and indesign and all these different software suites that people don't even know i can do yeah. you know what i mean i can operate this crap too you know it's just like i can do it and the thing is that when you learn how to do it yourself magnus mm -hmm. when you have edited your own videos and you have uh, run things, the parts of the business that you do yourself, when you actually go outsource it, you can manage those people that you're outsourcing that do better yeah. because now you know how to, yeah, what they're doing. It's like, now it's like, yeah, you're wasting your time over yeah. there. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? It's like, I can do this in two hours. Why is it taking you 16? Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, I definitely think that's good. And I, I mean, that's the case for most YouTubers. They, they have to start that way, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think, Pretty much all YouTubers know how to edit and then they outsource it at one point. And uh, for some people that's later than for others. Uh, yeah. Depends on when you find a good editor that can kind of replace you. Um, but uh, I think, yeah, eventually that has to happen for everyone to be able to grow. Yeah, but it also depends on whether you want to, you know, what comes with growth may not be what you want as well, you know? Yeah. Sometimes you have to ask yourself like, you know, when is enough enough? Yeah. That's another question I think a lot of people um, don't have people reminding them to ask themselves sometimes because what's the difference between, you know, a hundred million dollars and four hundred million dollars yeah. or a billion dollars and two billion dollars? Yeah, you know, yeah it's like, sure. you know, if it kills you to go from one to two billion, why the fuck did you even need to do that anyway? Yeah. What was the purpose of, of going? Like, you're not going to notice any quality of life difference. That's just a number in a magazine on a Forbes yeah. list. You know what I mean? But you could say the same thing, uh, you know, in our world, when you shrink things down to this little microcosm of what it is, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, do you need to go from, you know, this many subs of this many subs, or do you need to have, you know, how is your life going to be better if you go from a, you know, a 600 pound deadlift to a 625 pound deadlift, if it fucking kills you to get that extra 25 pounds, yeah. you know, where's the return on investment there? Where's the 80, 20 rule? Where's all this crap that you know yeah. people need to think about? That's, you know? and, and that's exactly what I'm thinking about climbing, you know, yeah. to go from V12 to V16. I have to star myself and like be really strict and like train yeah four times as much you know right like i don't want to do that you know that's not enjoyable for me so um yeah and uh, yeah like you say it's uh, it's the same with youtube as well i get it's different for you though because you are actually like one of the best rock climbers there's been right mm. so when when you would vocalize something like it's not worth it to go from the 12 to 13 that's mind-boggling to people yeah um for anyone that's kind of like below you in terms of like your skill level your experience you know people can more wrap their head around you know i don't need to go from an eight to a nine yeah that would be a really hard i'm good at an eight and people go like okay that's cool but when they look at you they're like but why wouldn't you want to be better yeah <laughs> you know it's like it's because i'm playing my own game yeah that's and i have so many other goals in life too and yeah. i have been at that level you know uh, so i've reached that level and then i've went back down kind of yeah and right now i enjoy life much more on that lower level yeah uh and i have yeah i have a lot of other goals in life as well um so uh so for me it's not yeah uh if it felt right i would do it but it doesn't feel right you know there you go yeah so 
let's let's finish let's wrap this up with uh you're talking about there's so many other things in life that you you would enjoy mm -hmm. just name some off the top of your head like just some, some small things is it it could be like a, a flavor of jelly it could be like a morning <laughs> a type of morning that you have when you're home uh it could be like something you and, and marta do together like what are some of the things that you've been enjoying lately it's just like man that, that makes me happy yeah you know i mean like I really enjoy uh, traveling, just yeah. just uh, me and my girlfriend, Marta. Uh, like we're going to Italy this summer, mm -hmm. take uh, like be two and a half weeks or something, just do just vacation. Nice. Um, what part? Uh, Northern Italy. Okay, we, yeah. went, we went to Rome. Okay. That was Southern Italy, I think. Yeah. I should know. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's in like the, the West. Rome yeah. is a big city though. So like where we're going is a small town with yeah. a lot of activity. There's a lot of climbing, swimming, is, biking. Oh, cool. So it's kind of like a vacation type thing. Yeah, and we did that last summer too. So we have a lot of good memories from that. So that's something I really look forward to. This has got climbing in there. And yeah, there see, is climbing. I, I can't think of a single type of vacation that I want to take where I wouldn't have something in there for training. Yeah, I mean. yeah me too. Um, yeah, no, so that's something that I really look forward to. Um, and then, um, what else am I looking forward to? Um, I, uh, I, I'm actually a nerd when it comes to cameras and stuff. Okay, I, I really, yeah, I really love cameras. Um, so I look forward to the A7S IV coming out this fall, which is rumored too. A7, okay, wait, yeah. Okay, I have an A7 III, it's recording over there. Yeah. Uh, my my editor Brian has an A7 IV, and then they have an A7S the, IV. No, A7S III. S3. A7S IV is not out yet. Okay, so yeah. he's got a four or something. I don't that know. A, a, Obviously, I don't know as much <laughs> about tech. A7 IV is out. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I love, that's what I watch the most on YouTube is uh, camera tutorials and mm -hmm. editing tutorials and stuff. That's... Uh, and yeah, I mean, that is what I'm thinking about now uh, and dreaming about. And like when I uh, zone out, I think about cameras and YouTube and stuff. So obviously that is the like right. shots and scenes and stuff yeah, as well. Video like ideas. how something's going to come out. Yeah. yeah, video ideas or while I'm editing a video, I can sit and watch TV and then I just zone out and completely forget that I'm watching TV and think about how I can make that part of the video a little bit better. I noticed that, you know, when I, I've been making videos for a while too, mm. when you when you watch something on TV, you watch it differently. Yeah. Because then you're looking like the way they're filming it. Yeah. You're looking at that. <laughs> I read books differently now too, because I write. And that's mm -hmm. one of the main things that I've been into lately is, is getting that. Yeah. Um, I've already written a lot of programs and stuff and books and stuff, but I'm going to keep doing more. But now I'll actually pick up a stack of books and actually read how the author organized it right. like there's no table there's fucking literally no table of contents in this book yeah. and it's a 250 <laughs> page book there's yeah. no chapters yeah. it's like it's not just text either it's it's like then you're like he's just numbering things yeah. this is interesting and then you start looking through it's like okay this guy's got an outline but then it just like stops being an outline at a certain point it's kind of like that with with video uh watching Mm -hmm. you know and you're zoning out and you're thinking about youtube it's yeah. like now you're looking at it differently you're not just watching it and, and enjoying the content but you're seeing how they film it yeah but also like when you're just daydreaming like when you're eating lunch and don't have anything to think about yeah that's when i think about like either the mo uh, either the video that i'm editing or a video that i plan on uh filming yeah you know so I th and i think that's the key to become good at anything in life you have to really that's how much you have to love what you're doing yeah or it, care about what you're doing yeah. yeah no it's just it's it's definitely like it just consumes you but in a good way yeah you know i guess it's is it's the best way because when you say something consumes you it sounds like you're you're neglecting so many other parts of yourself and sometimes there is some neglecting other parts of yourself in your life the things that just have to kind of take a back burner but ultimately like being consumed by something and just really being into it and just loving it like yeah. that that's a good thing yeah it's yeah so yeah all right well that's the uh end of the podcast i'm not really good at closing these type of things so magnus um mm. you got to tell us like where can we find you <laughs> like where they can you want to plug your links now <laughs> it's what they usually do on podcasts yeah it always feels awkward plugging your links but yeah. um i guess uh youtube is like the it's pretty much the only place that I publish stuff these mm -hmm. days. So uh, check out my YouTube channel. How about your Instagram? 
Yeah, but I'm not so active there. Uh, but of course, yeah, I. <laughs> I'm like some, the opposite. Yeah, you're the opposite. I, I, I do more on Instagram than YouTube. I okay. love Instagram. It's so yeah. much fun. But yeah, it's just different personality types are drawn to different types of platforms. Yeah. I think. No, if you uh, if you want to follow my Instagram, you're welcome to do that as well. Yeah, you post. You post. <laughs> you know, it's got some good pictures on it. Nice. And uh, any links in the description below, guys. Check out Magnus. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, uh, we just kind of ambushed you here with this little setup <laughs> in the hotel room, but well, now we're great. gonna go film some stuff. So get some food. Thank you for having uh, having the time and, and the stuff and this podcast is done. So this podcast is not a podcast. That's right. It's not a podcast. We're here. What's that? What do you mean? Smelling what is salts? The, yeah. Uh, I have. I've tried that before. I know. You tried again. Here you go. Have fun. Well, you haven't even opened it. <laughs> you got. You got it. Oh, you get, Jesus, it's, but it's already. You got to dig it out and stuff your nose in there, man. I, I've done this before. Give it a good hit. Oh. I just smell it from here. Oh, Jesus. Uh, oh, even my eyes. That burn. doesn't make you want to, like, speed run a wall, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's crazy. <laughs> that's some good shit. Good, you can take it with you. No, oh, thanks. Yeah, when you get when you get the very top of the wall, pull that out of your chalk bag. <laughs> it's a little bit too heavy, maybe. You should have these small packages. I can help you with that. You can? Yeah. Okay, good. We'll, we'll get it done. 